good morning um like i said i have kind of lost track of how our sundays are going um but welcome to our first sunday of the month of may um may is a very special month for me because my birthday is in 20 days so yay that's exciting. Um, I know I have not filmed in this location in a while, but Miss Stacy had a very busy week, so it resorted to filming here. But let's go ahead and jump right into our prayer. <clears throat> Lord, help me treat others with the love you have shown to me. This week, help me to reach out with your love to my family and friends and those around me. Amen. So today we're going to talk about um, the, the church and um, the early Christians and how they basically shared a lot of their things with each other. Um, so the reading is coming from the book of Acts again, so Acts chapter 2, but this time it's going to be verses um, 42 through 47, and let me see, I think we're also going to touch on chapter 4, verses 32 through 37, so, yep. So, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, and chapter 4, verses 32 through 37. <clears throat> and it's going to be coming out of both the books. So, our nice little yellow book down here. You can't really see it, but our yellow book. And then our good old trusty Shagon book, which is where I'll be reading it from. So, I'm going to be reading this right here. Um, enough for all. In the days after the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, people gathered about the apostles. The apostles preached about how Jesus, the Messiah, had risen from the dead. The people listened and were amazed because the apostles were doing many signs and wonders the way Jesus had. All those who believed shared all that they owned with each other. They would sell their possessions and give the money to others who needed it. They ate together in their homes gladly and generously. Day after day, they worshipped together in the temple. Together, they praised God. And day by day, more people joined their community. Everyone who owned lands or houses sold them and brought the money to the apostles to share with people who needed help. A man named Joseph sold a field, brought the money to the apostles, and laid it on the ground in front of them for them. The people in the community gave joyfully to each other. What one person had owned now belonged to everyone. Now everyone had a place to live and clothes to wear and enough food to eat. They were filled with the Spirit of God. <clears throat> so, it, it was a, just a short little passage. Um, and so, the people of, you know, the first church or in that community, they... Um, I didn't have a building to go into like we do now. So they, like it said, they meet outside or in each other's homes. Um, and shared everything together. So like it said, they shared their, f they ate together. They would give each other, um, their possessions so say I have this marker 
I'm going to give you my marker and you're going to give me maybe a pencil. So we're going to share everything that we have with each other. Um, but being in each other's homes, how do you think they all felt being with each other? Do you think that they felt maybe crowded? That maybe it felt different from what they were used to? Or maybe they actually liked it. They liked having each other in... Um, they liked being in each other's homes because they were all together and united um, to celebrate, you know, Christ and the Lord himself. So many um, feelings about being with each other. Maybe they felt like, like I said, they could have felt crowded. They could have had fun, you know, different things like that. So why did more and more people want to join the community? So why do you think that more people wanted to join them in what they were doing? Um, maybe they liked the idea of everyone coming together and sharing. Um, so maybe they felt loved and welcomed that they were all together and sharing all this stuff with each other. Um... Maybe they felt like, okay, what's the old saying? What's yours is mine and what's mine is yours. Because of them giving to each other, there was never a time where anyone had anything to themselves because they always shared with each other. Um, so think about the people that you often eat with. Is it your family, your friends, or other people? Um, and who could you share food with? So, um, a lot of the time, because I live alone, I will eat by myself. But there are times where I will maybe go to um, a family member's house, like my mom's house or my dad's house. Um, or maybe an aunt or uncle's house and I will, you know, spend time with them and, you know, eat with them. Um, I go to my friend's house often, so I eat with my friends and others. I work at a daycare, so I eat with the kids too. And I also work here um, helping take care of other people so I have the tendency to eat with them a lot as well um who could you share your food with you could share your food with um anybody um those you know your family your friends around you maybe um those less fortunate who don't have any food that and you want to share your food with them so that they have a meal to eat as well so there are different people that you are able to share with. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, so if we talk about the church and how everyone was in, um, how they had church either outside or in their homes. So everyone in the first church, they loved Jesus very much. Um, and his followers taught and listened. Um, well, they taught and everyone listened to them. So the apostles, they listened to. So they heard about uh, how Jesus showed God's love and how he died on the cross and came back to life. And every day, more people heard about Jesus and began to believe in him. So the people in the first church prayed together. Like we said, did everything together. Um, and many wonderful things happened when they prayed. So the sick people were made well again. They weren't sick anymore. And... Once that happened, even more people began to believe in Jesus. So then the community grew even larger. It grew even bigger than what it was. I say it started off like this. Just a small 
circle of maybe, let's say, five people are in the circle. Well, they talked about Jesus and then it grew. So the circle now holds 10 people. But then they prayed for the sick and the sick got well. So then even more people believed in it. So it went from 10 to maybe 25 people in the circle. And as they keep talking and um, explaining the things that Jesus has done and what God has done, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. And now we have a whole big group of Christians with each other um, sharing and praying with each other every single day. Um, so the people in the first church praised God together. We are the church and we can praise God as well. Um, even from at home, we are still the church. So, let's see, that, that's it, yeah. We are the church. We can share with each other. We are sharing with each other. I am sharing with you right now. I am sharing what I have in here with you. And you can share that with someone else. See, it's a big old cycle that just keeps on going. I am told this, I tell you this, you tell someone else, and they tell someone else. So our big circle that consists of now millions of people is going to keep growing and produce another million people. So, you know, we're just spreading God's love and his message about him and Jesus one story at a time because we are sharing even still with each other every day. Um, so that is all that I have for you today. Next week, I will be in my regular setting at home. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and end with a prayer. Let me see what is it. Uh, okay. Lord, thank you for your messages and your words. Thank you for the church that we may celebrate in. And thank you for giving us the guidance for me to pass on and for the others to pass on to even more. Amen. That is all that I have for you today. Have a great week. Make sure that you wash your hands and you wear your masks and be safe. See you next week.